Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Future Hour. And today is a very, very special and unique episode because、uh, we just cannot wait to pick the brain and ask Mister and the Guru Ganesha himself to share more so the beautiful journey and what inspires him throughout the way and throughout his journey. So thank you so much for taking the time. Nice to see you, Jazzy. I've been looking forward to this opportunity to commune with you. Absolutely, it's such my pleasure as well. So,、um, would like to jump right into it.、Um, Guru Ganesha, would you mind share with us what do you think that life is about? Maybe you could begin with a story. To me, life is about loving unconditionally, and、uh, and and being、uh, as much a human being as a human doing. You know, I think for most of my life, I, I've been trying to accomplish things. You know,、uh, oftentimes to please others. You know, going to college to please my my mother, and uh, but uh, and 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 you know, if I look back over the last, I'm seventy one now. If I look back over the last fifty, sixty years, I've been hyper focused on accomplishing things. So I, I've been more of a human doing, human doing, do 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 do, but of late I'm making it a priority to be a human being, and I think the more you sit, and the deeper you go inside yourself, and particularly meditate at the heart, and feel the heartbeat, and even be, get so still that you can hear the heartbeat, you realize it's enough for me to just be a loving being. And、um, so, and and that means loving not just everybody else, but accepting and loving myself for exactly who I am, and understanding that that we each have a you know the mind is a powerful tool, and、uh, it's a thought machine. It produces a vast spectrum of thoughts. You know, ra- ranging from what what you might judge to be as sinister, all the way to divine. And、uh, I, I, I'm learning that, you know, my essence is beyond the mind, and、uh, that there's. I, I believe this to be true. I can't scientifically prove it, but I believe there's a super consciousness that the intellect, the mind, can't fully grasp. That's a benevolent force, and、uh, I've learned to trust it, and it serves up opportunity after opportunity. I no longer have to pursue anything; it all comes to me, and I no longer need to be anything because we're all the same. We're all equals. We all. I, I believe that the、uh, the highest wisdom lives in each heart. So I'm not into putting individuals. Anybody higher than me? Anybody lower than me? I feel like we're all all have the capacity. If somebody asked me the other day, "Are you a guru?" That's my name. My given name is Guru Ganesha. I said, "Well, I'm Ganesha's guru. I'm my own guru, <laughs> and you're Guru Jiazi. I look everybody. I see a guru." That is absolutely amazing, beautiful. There's so many、uh, points I would like to touch into that. Uh, maybe we could try to pinpoint the specific moment, if you would like, that you mentioned that you realized that you no longer had to do anything, but things and opportunities just show up into your life. I would assume that came from you made a decision, and then that happened.、Um, would you mind share with us what decision did you made? And what was your life like before, and what was your life like after? It's hard to pinpoint the exact、uh, moment in time. It's been, and, and also,、uh, you know, I've been kind of in and out of it. I believe you're already enlightened, Jazzy. I believe I'm enlightened. I believe everybody is basically enlightened.、Uh, we, we, on a certain level, we bought into this notion that we we need everything. I, I'm not convinced we need as much as maybe thoughts tell us we need. You know. In a way, it's a bit of a、uh, video game that we play every day, and、uh, you know the the media 
who I, I love everybody, you know, I love everybody unconditionally, but the media has a job. It's to serve. It's those that finance it. So uh, they've uh, devised all sorts of ways to convince us that we need, that we're not enough. I'm not enough until I buy your product. Uh, but, you know, it's very liberating to realize that I come fully contained, that you come fully contained with everything you need to be happy, healthy, to enjoy your life, to be, uh, to, to touch and uplift people. But also, you know, we have a bit of the devil in each of us as well. We have to acknowledge that. And, uh, you know, but those are, those are thought pa patterns that appear. And uh, if you sit back inside your heart where your soul is, where I believe the soul is, it gives you the capacity to slow down and to make decisions as to which thoughts to pursue. Not to judge thoughts as evil. Just say, ah, maybe to chuckle and say, oh, there's one of those thoughts again. I think not. I think I don't go down this path. Why don't I go down the path of love instead of the path of fear? So it's been a process. And also just for me and my own, you know, I embraced a spiritual teacher in human form back when I was 21 years old, 1971, I met a man and, uh, and uh, who I kind of put way up on a pedestal. And many others did too. And many others here in, uh, is a gentleman from India. We put him way up on a pedestal and uh, kind of related to him all. He is the master of the universe. Every word out of his mouth is a pearl. And that... Uh, to have a successful life, I just need to listen and obey what he says. Well, it turns out he had a whole double life, secret life that we weren't aware of where he was here, hurting people. And, uh, you know, and that was disappointing, a bit disillusioning. And, uh, you know, not becoming uh, of, of somebody that I want to continue holding in high esteem and revering. For, but the lesson was... We put him up on the pedestal. He probably couldn't believe how high up on the pedestal we put him. And then that part of him uh, saw an opportunity and took advantage in a way that was not to his ultimate best interest either. I, I believe that we need to make an effort to practice ahimsa. So in any event, I feel like now I have a more direct channel, a direct a kind of a hotline right to my highest wisdom that's has been sitting inside me all this time. Now to hear that voice, I just need to get quiet and still. And slow things down, slow things down. You know, when you slow your rate of breathing, your mind produces fewer thoughts and they're higher caliber thoughts. So when I want to really hear the truth, I start by slowing everything down for maybe 10 minutes. Long, slow, deep breathing, perhaps holding the inhale. Perhaps. Funny that I'm talking about this, but this is what's been on my mind of late, is how to, how to not just be of service to the planet, which I've always had this deep desire, but to truly enjoy every moment. I mean, this is a miraculous opportunity to have a human body and for all of us to be together with each other. And I believe consciousness is prevailing on the planet. I can't prove it. Certainly, if you watch the news and everything, it looks like the opposite is happening. But I, I, believe, <laughs> I believe that right now, you know, the truth and goodness and unconditional love and the justice and equality is prevailing. And it's a beautiful thing to watch. There are so many millions of people that are making a decision to try to live in their highest possible consciousness. Not to judge and reject other aspects of self, but just realizing why not behave in a way that truly is uplifting to all. And forgive yourself for any missteps. And pick a play. And if you love something, do it as much as possible, you know, because then that, that fills you and then you have more to give. That's why I play my guitar so much. Right. And uh, before we get into you and the music and the story with your guitar. Um, super interesting that you mentioned um, about forgiving yourself, right? Um, I mean, 
constantly reading this book, Letting Go. Um, I have it right next to my table uh, by David Hawkins, right? Great book, great book indeed. Um, it's essentially, long story short, it talks about that Arthur believes in and I believe in too. And I'm sure that when I mentioned this, you're going to find it interesting as well, which is he essentially mentioned that when we let go or when we forgive or letting the thoughts go or suppress emotions and those energies that are being suppressed, actually we regain those kind of energy, right? Uh, and fear or guilt, he mentioned, is a very good one, right? Because when, like, when there's a fear or guilt, it's almost like it's just blocking a huge amount of energy from us and when we let go of that you know and we regain the energy right so with that said um how do you go about forgiving uh your past or something like that yeah you look back and say hey i was making my best effort <laughs> with the the knowledge the wisdom i was in touch with at that moment in time or i acted maybe impulsively but you know i i don't reject emotions I, I, when emotions arise, I, I, I recognize them, I acknowledge them because they're kind of the sensory mechanism of the soul. You know, and I divide emotions into two categories, right? One category are emotions that make you feel more okay about self, about life, about the universe. And then there are thoughts and emotions that, that feel not okay, make me feel less okay about myself. But I want to recognize those, acknowledge those, you know, embrace the difficult emotions and, 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 and just allow them to be. And instead of saying, oh no, and trying to comp shove them into a compartment, sit with them and learn from them. And, uh, you know, that's what's been different in the last five years or so versus the 45 years before uh, that I was meditating, that I was really trying to fight off thoughts, feelings that made me feel less okay about the self. Now I recognize I'm infinite. So as an infinite being, I have the capacity to think or feel anything that any other human being on the planet is thinking or feeling. And uh, so thus I, I am making my best effort not to judge the souls of other human beings because I believe everybody has goodness at the core. But, you know, even like Nelson Mandela said, no child is born to hate. He said every child is born to love and hug. And but they get they get taught how to hate. So we're just recognizing our humanity and uh, spiritual ego. I think, you know, I was afflicted with that for maybe 45, 50 years. And I'm trying to let go of this feeling that I know something that somebody else doesn't know. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, I have two beautiful roundhouses in my life. You know, when I was a young man, I embraced the Sikh path and most of this S-I-K-H and, and means student, student of life. And most of the Sikhs in the, in the world live in Northern India. So that there was a, C, a C, great Sikh teacher that lived 450, 500 years ago named Guru Ramdas. And so I've studied him. And what I love about him is he would, uh, he, he said the best service is anonymous. That requires no recognition, you know? And uh, even though he was a great spiritual teacher, he would, dis the story goes that he would disguise himself at night so nobody could recognize that he was the great teacher and go into the parts of, uh, of Amritsar where nobody else would go, where the lepers were, the untouchables because of the caste system. And he would wash their feet and he would take care of them and he would nurse them back to health. For seven years, they didn't even know that this was the guru. And uh, wow. I, so that uh, humility of consciousness, uh, I found very inspiring, you know, because I had always been striving to be somebody, you know, to be a rock and roll star, to be well known, to have people look up to me, really. But when you get into it, I was trying to feel maybe a, 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 some self-limiting beliefs I had about myself that I wasn't enough. And so the way to be loved was to become somebody. <laughs> the other Ram Das, yeah, the, the other Ram Das that I love is the Ram Das that was, used to be uh, do, uh, Dr. Richard Alpert, you know, and he embraced, went to India, got inspired, and he became Ram Das. He wrote the book, Be Here Now. Uh, he passed away maybe almost two years ago, 
but prior to that, he had re- written a beautiful book called Becoming Nobody. When I read it, I, I could understand, help me understand that that's part of what I'm doing now. <laughs> Instead of fighting yes. to be somebody, I'm just okay with just being an infinite continuum of energy vibrating. And that everything else is a construct yes. of my mind and my identity and my big self is just a construct of the mind. And perhaps, uh, you know, perhaps I like myself better just as a trillions of cells vibrating in oneness with everything. I think this is like the perfect opportunity to share a little bit how us connected. Not sure, Guru Ganesha, if you remembered um, the first time when we had this conversation, I was so surprised and happy that actually I was texting you personally because um, I had this playlist of music and affirmations I listen to every night. And at that time, for about, I think, two years, I have this song of you. I believe that it was like you mentioned to me a live in New Jersey. I was raining and you were playing the guitar and uh, the lyrics. Yes. Yes, exactly right. And the beginning of the lyrics was, um, I believe you told me that she was improvising and the rain is falling. With Sonata, she would do that a lot. We'd, we'd sit, we'd start playing with a, ch- a mantra perhaps. And then all of a sudden we'd go into this zone and she would just start channeling these beautiful lyrics and everything we were doing. It had a, it had a basic structure, but it was very improvisational. I love the freedom. And I love to play music with people who, uh, you know, that uh, are comfortable with that freedom. It doesn't have to be, you know, you need a foundational structure, you know, so you're in the same universe anyways. But it's so nice when, you have, when you're playing with people that aren't sitting in judgment of every note, you know, so. And, and, and in fact, more, we were in full appreciation of what each of us was bringing to the, you know, to the moment. That's a, a, a wonderful album called Sanatam Kaur, live in concert with Guru Ganesha, Manish Vyas and Ramdas. Different Ramdas. This is a younger Ramdas who plays beautiful clarinet, keyboards, sings beautifully. Still tours with Sanatam. Absolutely. And I strongly recommend everyone's listening right now, go check it out from Spotify or YouTube Music or all the platforms. Um, truly, truly great. I listened to that song specifically for like two years. And then later on, one day I stumbling upon your Facebook page and there's this number written and I actually screenshot that page for two months before I even send you the text. And anyway, fast forward a few months later, now we're here recording this podcast. Um, so just want to say thank you for the music, the creativity you've been putting out there in the world and um, you plant the seed in my life, let's say five, six years ago, which is absolutely incredible. So um, this is a Question, I'm so excited. Please. By the way, I think you, it's a very, you know, synergistic relationship. You know, I would be doing this even if there was no way to get it out there. But, you know, it's each one of these songs is kind of like a child that you love. And and I I have this desire, you know, to share them. Any musician will tell you they want to share it with family, brothers and sisters all in the but some of the beautiful messages that I get back really inspire me when I may be not feeling inspired to do music. I'll get a message from you or somebody somewhere and I go, oh, my God, this music that I did six years ago seems to have touched his or her heart. Let me get myself into my studio. And, <laughs> you know, we, we inspire each yeah. other. It's a beautiful relationship. And it's not artist here, audience here. No. Beautiful. In fact, I say audience here, we're going to have a strata. It's audience here, artist here. And, and, and it's such a beautiful thing to be, have, to be on the earth and to be able to you know, touch each other in this way. So I think I keep uh, playing the guitar and singing as long as, uh, you, know, uh, uh, you know, thy will be done, as long as it's in the will of the divine. And that's my only prayer left is when I say thy will, I'm, I'm bowing to that super consciousness that I feel like is prevailing through my heart, through your heart, through every heart. I, I can't prove it. I totally believe it to be a benevolent force. Thus, I just say, hey, arrange my affairs. I'm just going to show up every day. 
And then when you're in that space, you recognize that opportunities manifest and, and the ones that really resonate with your heart, you go with. But it all comes. I know everybody feels like they got to go out there and fight for it. I thought that for many, many decades. But, you know, I'm just sharing what's happening with me. And a lot of people have told me, yeah, see, I don't know for sure. I think because you're, what you're hearing right now is me transmitting via my mind. And my mind is not all powerful. I'm just trying to interpret the feelings I have in my heart and soul, putting them into words so we can communicate, you know. But I feel like there's this super consciousness that that's what I bow to, but it's in me, it's in you, I bow to it in you. And I trust it. I trust it. And um, everybody, you know, a lot of people call me and say, well, you're not sure about this. What about this? What about this? And I say, well, I don't have all the answers. Just because I have a white beard doesn't mean I have all the answers. This is something I feel in my heart and soul that that which is guiding me is trustworthy, is benevolent. It's working out so far, but could change tomorrow, you know. <laughs> we start from now and we're going to uh, look back about the past, which is Guru Ganesha, tell us about your EP and anything you could share with us. And also maybe I share some stories on the process of creating and recording this EP because the sound is great. This has been a whole new chapter of music coming through me inspired because i'm listening i'm listening to others to see what you know because the beautiful thing about really listening is that i feel this divine energy kind of can come through anybody and so the owner of the you know i founded a record label back in 2000 called spirit voyage and uh i i have a whole other business where i i teach professionals technology salespeople who do sell complex, big dollar technical solutions, business to business. I have a company called Conscious with my business partner called Conscious Selling Incorporated. And I, I teach people that if you have the intention to do what's truly in the best interest of your prospective client, you'll be super successful as opposed to the typical salesperson whose intention is to make a sale. Uh -uh. We should only do business if it's truly, if we both have the conviction it's truly in the best interest of both parties. But in any event, that philosophy has helped me to be very pro successful and prosperous in the business arena. So I took a bunch of that money in the late 90s, start, right in 2000, I founded a Spirit Voyager record label, not designed to make money because I didn't really need the money. It was designed to get sound current out there that I believe to be healing. And that would remind people of their heart, of their soul, and of their highest self, you know? And in particular, Sonata was Sonata Car, S N A T A M. I've known her since she was a little girl. I know she has this gift. And uh, that, you know, she, in the studio, she almost became like an extraterrestrial. She lights up, she channels, and she could rest tears from a stone gargoyle, her, her connection. You know, because not that she's acrobatic singer, you know, like some uh, some other singers, but she her sound current is so pure, so peaceful, coming from such a deep, humble connection that it moves people, it touches people's heart in a way that maybe their heart hasn't been touched this lifetime, and it inspires people to want to kind of go go deeper within. So, in any event, I wanted to get that music out. And uh, also uh, Guru Singh had beautiful music out in LA and with Seal, the Grammy Award winning artist Seal sang on one of our albums because he was studying the yoga that we study. And, uh, but mainly I did this to get Sonatam's voice out there and have it properly produced and found an incredible producer in LA named Thomas Barkey, who's also been a student of yoga and meditation. He used to be a rock star in Germany. I uh, used to mid late fifties, but in any event, so uh, in, in, uh, from 2000 to 2010, not only did we record many albums for Sonatum Car, but I also kind of became her business manager and she and I went out on, uh, and I organized tours. We started going to different yoga centers and playing the 25, 50 people, but it, it grew over six, seven years to where we were playing for uh, arenas with thousands of people. 
And uh, uh, we rolled out about 10 albums, mostly Sonata solo albums. I contributed, helped write some of the music, financed it all. Uh, Thomas helped write some of it. Sonata, of course, wrote a lot of her own. Uh, it was a beautiful collaboration, Sonata, Thomas, and I. And the, the label, the music and the label did uh, far better than I could have anticipated. And also because Sonata and I started touring and we were doing 75 to 100, 110 concerts a year all over the world, I couldn't run the label any, any longer. And I brought in a second generation person from our community who's just got is is brilliant entrepreneur but the heart of gold. That's a really wonderful combination, you know. So she always her heart weighs in on every decision. It's not just dollars and cents. In fact, the dollars and cents often are a lower lower priority in terms of the decisions she makes. But uh, and. Um, I sold the, the majority of the company to her around 2005, Cutting, and uh, K-A-R-A-N, Kalsa, who, who, by the way, is writing the lyrics for many of the new songs on the new album that I'll tell you about. But I, I wanted to give you some background on Spirit Voyage and my journey with Sonatum, which was phenomenal. There wasn't, in any event, so we started the tour about 2001, 2002, and between two, that period and about 2011, when I... Uh, when we kind of went different ways, we delivered probably between five and 800 concerts together. And, and, and you know, we call them co-formances, not performances, because, and, you know, we explain right from the beginning, we're here to facilitate an experience. And you're as important part of this as we are. And uh, we inspire people at the concerts to do what the spirit moves them to do. And for many people, it was to sing along because we serve up mantras, very simple phrases in Gurmukhi or in English that, that, that really resonate with people's hearts and souls. You know, peace to all, life to all, love to all, little simple things like that. I am the light of my soul, you know. And, and people start to realize, wow, when I sing these kind of words in simple, beautiful melodies from my heart with hundreds or even a handful of other people, something special happens. And people started experiencing a bliss that um, heretofore they hadn't experienced in other aspects of our life, you know? It, it was a, it's a very rich, delicious, spiritual pleasure. And I'm not saying these are any better than the sensual pleasures one can have in life of uh, uh, having sex and loving somebody or having a fantastic meal. This is just a different kind of delicious pleasure that's, you know, that's very spiritual, feels very, very light and uplifting. And so, uh, but, so we did that, the record labels flourished, Synonymous in it, was a Grammy nominee and all this kind of stuff. But around 2010, 2011, I got sick from, you know, I had turned 60 uh, in 2010. And I was touring not only with Sonata, I ended up, I did some tours with Tina Malia, who's another wonderful uh, singer of uplifting songs. And I just maybe pushed myself too hard. And one night before a concert, my hands were double the size. I couldn't even hold the guitar. And, uh, and uh, I ended up not being uh, missing for the first time in 11 years, missing not only a concert, but a whole tour. I had to stay back and figure out what was going wrong with me. And then Sonatum came visit me afterwards and we decided, you know what? It was time for her to fly. And, you know, uh, and, and she also felt that I had music inside me that needed to be fully expressed and wouldn't be fully expressed if we stayed together. So an amicable, we parted ways. It was kind of like a river hit some land like this and we went in two different directions. And we, we continue to be great friends to this day. And if we are at gatherings together, we'll play music together. That's when I started the Gurganesha band in 2011. Oh, it's Asha Tree, you know, with Paloma Davy and yeah, A Thousand Sons. And there's an album by that name. It's That's definitely the most streamed song that uh, I've ever been part of. And Paloma Davy and I wrote that together. And in fact, that whole album, she's another great, 
ar artist in this thing. But the reason I brought Paloma Davy in and the people I brought in, there's a part of me that loves to rock out. You know, I, I love the Grateful Dead. Jerry Garcia was my uh, kind of first guru, musical guru. And Sonata knew that because I was kind of chomping at the bit to play more up-tempo music. So when I started my band, uh, uh, we were playing what I called mantra rock, you know, all uplifting songs, but with a full drum kit, bass. I switched to electric guitar from acoustic guitar, which I played with Sonata for years. And then you have A Thousand Sons. You have a live album we did uh, called Love is Love. Also a, a tribute to the LGBTQ community worldwide. And um, uh, what else did we roll out? Uh, In the Light of My Soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Although you're talking about the live version too, where we switch in the middle to well, What You Won't Do For Love, which is a cover. And our bass player, who has a great blues voice, takes over and just you know, knocks it out of the park. But in any event, that band was a true collaboration, even though it had my name on it because I was more well-known. We wrote everything together. We made every decision together. It was very Aquarian in terms, and, and there was a beauty to that, you know, because uh, rarely do you have a band where you don't have a leader. Even though it was called Guru Band, we were all leaders at different times. You know, so that was a beautiful period of my life. And, uh, but then a couple of years ago, Cullen came to me and said, Gary Ganesha, I really miss you playing the acoustic guitar. And I, 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 I would like to finance a project. And this was a start of maybe a year and a half ago, two years ago, she approached me even before the pandemic started. But, and I hear you doing more kind of, singer songwriter stuff i because she heard me she, when she was being born i was sitting out in the hallway with a group of people in the community chanting the guru Ramdas while her mother was giving birth so we have this deep connection and she'd heard me playing in living rooms these kind of songs over the years and she said and i said well i'll consider doing it but you need to write the lyrics for these songs because you're an incredible writer. Also, you're, you're, you really have your heart connected with your generation. And this is the leadership. This is where we're going. And I, I, I want to learn what's going on in the hearts of your generation. So we decided to collaborate. And so we're now near the end of the album. We, but, but we've been releasing them one song at a time. First one, Mysterious Pathway. Second one in the middle of the pandemic, undying as a tribute, not only to those souls leaving, but those souls remaining behind and, and soothing medicine for both. Uh, and then I did a, a, uh, a cover song called uh, Landslide, which was a Stevie Nicks song from the 70s, Fleetwood Mac, but it, the, the words have a whole new meaning for me. And, and, and those of us who are in our spiritual community who've been going through such a hard time trying to reconcile you know what our, our you know our, our uh, the gentleman we embraced as a spiritual guide and all the revelations about him so uh, that song re really speaks to the moment a lot of people in the community you know messaged me said thank you for singing that song they had never fully listened to the words before um and after that uh uh Cullen wrote me this beautiful poem, called, originally called River of Starlight, which, by the way, is going to be the title of the album. The song is called River. The album is called River of Starlight. And it's about my intimate relationship with my guitar, with, the, with singing, and with just music in general, how it's, you know, for me, it's just medicine, you know, my soul's medicine. And it's something I can share in a very unconditional way, just get it out there and not worry if people are listening to it or not. But it's like, there is a river of starlight writing songs on my heart. From silence, wind that pulls words into the night. There's a tune playing softly inside me. Can you hear it and igniting a spark? I'm adrift on these waves of sound as this river flows to you. This call from my heart 
finding its way to you. When this heart is true, carries me to you, always carries me to you. And this is kind of my relationship with the divine as manifested through all beings. So it's a love song for all of us together. And that, you know, I feel like music, you know, my, the Grateful Dead and Jerry Garcia gave me hope. Their music, just the music. This is late 1969, 70. You know, I was killing myself. Uh, you know, I, over a period of time, I must have taken close to 200 LSD trips, you know. And, uh, you know, I had some amazing experiences, but it was a roller coaster. And I was, you know, on the downside of the roller coaster, it was, you know, I was close to wanting to leave. And I started going to see the Grateful Dead live and they were experimenting with psychedelics too, but there was something about the music and Jerry Garcia's uh, uh, joyful guitar playing. When I heard that, because I started playing guitar at eight and I was like, all of a sudden just hearing that gave me hope that life could be worth living, that life could be beautiful. And it kind of, I felt like I was seeing a bit of my future that the universe was saying, hey, man, we love you. We're with you here. Have a look at what your life could be like. Not that my life has been like Jerry Garcia's, but we've had some similar experiences. But it was the beauty of what he was channeling through him, even in his pain, because he ended up, uh, you know, killing himself uh, because of his long term addiction to heroin. But I know who he was. I know his heart. I know his soul. Sometimes I feel like he's with me. But there was a joy in the music. His guitar playing was like a river, a bubbly, joyful river, you know. And that's kind of what this song is. River, the whole album, River of Starlight. Is like Now, in January, I'm releasing another cover, Jazzy. It's uh, a YouTube cover written by Bono. And it's called, I Still Haven't Found What I'm Looking For. And people are like, well, Gurganesha, haven't you found it? I said, well, 50% of the time, I feel like I found what I'm looking for. 50% of the time, I'm still seeking and thinking there's something greater out there. So I said, I've been singing that uh, this song in that 50% of the time. Beautiful song that, you know, just... I, I listened to it again be, before I started working on it. And I get, oh, my God, this just struck this really rich chord in my heart. So that's coming out very different than the way Bono does it. Bono, that's a rock the way they do it. You too. This is the way Cotton encouraged me to, to sing. And uh, my producer, Phoenix Quinn. Uh, it's gentle, slow, deep with all just acoustic guitar and uh, and a little pedal steel. Very simple, no bass, no percussion. There isn't any percussion on any of these songs in, the, in River of Starlight in this album. And then there'll be a sixth song coming out in March, which will be a, kind of similar to May the Long Time Sunshine Upon You All Loves You, but something new and it, kind of a prayer for all of us that's really touches the pulse of what's going on right now. And that'll, that'll be kind of the last track on the album. 